Hi everyone, this is Yasin Nasseri. I'm 24 years old. I'm a chemical engineer and I'm currently part of the R&D team in the, in the Moroccan Agency for Sustainable Energy, Mazen, uh, where I'm working as a uh, R&D and industrial integration analyst. So this presentation will be about uh, modeling and simulation of hydrogen production from variable renewable energies using SAM, uh, which was my graduation project in 2018. So I'm, work, I'm going through this uh, presentation to show you how I use it SAM to establish a model that calculates hydrogen production profile and uh, hydrogen production costs based on renewable energy sources, specifically PV uh, wind and PV wind hybrid system. Uh, so I'm going to start with a brief introduction about water electrolysis systems Then I'm going to highlight the modeling approaches to follow for modeling an electrolysis system and Finally, I'll show you how uh, using SAM I was able to establish uh, the technical model uh, for uh, the calculation of hydrogen production profile and also uh, the economic model for the calculation of hydrogen production costs um, I mean uh, the levelized cost of hydrogen. So water electrolysis is the reaction of water decomposition um, using electrical energy. So we get two gases produced in parallel, hydrogen and oxygen. This reaction is achieved using a system called an electrolyzer and um, there, there are mainly three technologies. We have um, uh, PEM, alkaline, and solid oxide electrolyzer cell. Uh, in our case, we will be focusing only on ele alkaline electrolyzers, um, which is the well matrix technology compared to the others. So, uh, this is an example of an electrolysis cell for an alkaline electrolysis technology. It's made up principally with an ionic conductor called electrolyte specifically alkali electrolyte, which is an aqueous potassium hydroxide. Uh, it's made up also with an active layers at which the redox reactions occur and uh, there is an active layer at both cathode and anode. Uh, so hydrogen is produced at the anode level and oxygen at the cathode level and also um, there is um, current and material collector uh, enabling the uh, electricity supply and collection of reagents and products uh, so using one cell we cannot of course produce a large quantity of hydrogen uh, therefore, at large scale of production, cells are assembled in series into a sack by the means of two designs, monopolar design and bipolar design. In the monopolar design, the electrodes are either negative or positive with parallel electrical connection of the individual cells, while in the bipolar design, the individual cells are linked in series electrically and geometrically. One advantage of the bipolar electrolyzer sacs is that they are more compact than monopolar systems. The advantage of the compactness of the bipolar cell design is that it gives shorter current path in the uh, electrical wires and electrodes and um, this reduces the losses due to internal ohmic resistance of the electrolyte and therefore increases the um, electrolyzer efficiency. However, there are also some um, disadvantages with bipolar cell. One example, uh, example is that the compactness and high pressures of the bipolar electrolyzers require uh, sophisticated and complex system designs and uh, consequently uh, this increases the manufacturing cost and the monopolar electrolyzer system 
or in comparison less costly to manufacture. Nevertheless, most commercial alkaline electrolyzers manufacture to their ore by polar. Uh, here we can see the principal auxiliary components in an electrolysis system. So here the SAC electrolysis has two inputs, water as a reagent and uh, electricity to occur the reaction of water splitting. So water is pumped to SAC cells after preheating to the operating temperature which is in range of 70 to 100 degrees for low temperature electrolyzers. The two gases produced are evacuated with a certain quantity of bubbles of water. Therefore, hydrogen and oxygen enter to a, a separation unit for purification using water before getting in the conditioning process and then to storage. And obviously, it is important to have control devices for regulation as well as for safety issues. So the reaction of water decomposition involves a large number of physical and chemical phenomena. So uh, it, in order to describe all these phenomena occurring inside the electrolysis sac, a classification has been proposed based on several criteria, namely physical domains, modeling approaches, dynamic behaviors, and modeling scale. So here we can see that the electrolysis sac modeling is an assembly of four physical domains. So we have electrical domain, thermal domain, thermochemical domain, and fluidic domain. And there is of course a certain interaction between, uh, between some of them. So the modeling of each physical mo uh, domain is achieved using uh, anal analytical uh, or empirical approach, or both of them. The difference between uh, the two approaches is that the analytical approach describes the phenomena using physical laws, equations, and all parameters have a physical meaning while the empirical approach is uh, based on experiences and the equation parameters do not have, do not have uh, a uh, physical meaning. In addition to, mo to the modeling approach, uh, there is a dynamic behavior that indicates if these parameters depend on time or they are static. And the last criteria is the modeling scale, uh, so it could be the cell, SAC, or the overall system. In our case, we will be focusing only on electrochemical modeling. So the electrochemical model that I choose to work with is the one developed by Yulberg, uh, which is uh, the most used in uh, modeling studies. This is the model equation or specifically the characteristic equation of the system. It takes into account the impact of temperature on the current voltage characteristics of the cell as it is well illustrated in this graph. So using this model we can not only calculate the hydrogen and oxygen production using Faraday's law but also observe the variation of different electrolyzer parameters, uh, especially when it is powered by an intermittent source of electrical energy such as PV and wind, so we can see the impact of electricity variation on these parameters. So here uh, I'm presenting the overall scheme of the model that I'm working on using SAM. So briefly, my uh, idea is to add a module of hydrogen production and storage to SSC library and incorporate this module with PV and the uh, wind model, fuel cell model, and battery model. The objective of this configuration is to allow the users of some graphical user interface to establish their own operation strategies to dispatch the production of electricity uh, for example to produce hydrogen and storage 
or to use the hydrogen storage to reproduce electricity using a fuel cell with a battery. I've made some discussions with Nick Giorgio concerning the uh, incorporation of hydrogen model with the fuel cell model and I'm still working on it using um, some beta version. So, uh, using uh, some LK scripting language, I was able to link the simulation results of PV and wind model to the inputs of hydrogen production model and calculate the annual production profiles of hydrogen, uh, oxygen, and also the water consumption profile. Moreover, all the variation parameters of the stack. Um, cells such as uh, current density, cell voltage, uh, they could also be visualized using the LK scripting interface. About the economic model, I choose to work with Python to develop the model of uh, calculation of hydrogen production costs from um, the three renewable energy sources PV, wind, and PV wind hybrid system. Um, the, the model of PV and wind uh, are being imported from some SSC library to Python. The purpose of the model that I developed is not only to calculate the SEOH but also to enable other economic studies um, such as sensitivity analysis, uh, etc. So that concludes my presentation. I would like to thank uh, Sam support team for the invitation to this workshop. Thank you so much for your interest in the attention and if you have any specific questions, please feel free to contact me via email or via WhatsApp. Thank you.